Hey everyone, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, on Instagram, on Pinterest, on Twitter, on a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm really excited to be sharing with y'all this week. I'm um, going to be sharing, hopefully, um, my K through 2 lessons. I know um, I've done a little bit different in the past, but I'm going to focus on K through 2 um, and all the sort of integrations and things that go along with that. Um, but first, let me do a couple quick ha housekeeping things. Um, so if you uh, hear me say, like, it's on the links page, or I put a link to that, blah, blah, blah. Um, I have a whole page on my blog dedicated to the links and the, uh, the books and the things that I talk about in this video. Um, so if you hear me say links page, if there's a, at the bottom of Facebook or YouTube if you're watching there or Instagram, um, there's a link to my blog where you can go directly there. Otherwise, you can go to my blog, makemomentsmatter.org and search um, under the videos tab um, and you can find um, all the links page on the links. It's like Musical Mondays Recap um, 2021. 2022 which is our current school year <laughs> okay i'm gonna try and change this light my um my video is doing this weird blinking thing maybe that fixed it um anyway so that's out of the way also if you want to join my facebook group every moment matters music education community um it's a great place to um get ideas and ask questions and um try and find help from other folks so um come join us it'd be fun to continue our conversation past just this monday uh video Okay, and then one more thing um, before I uh, say a couple other things. Um, workshops. Oh my gosh, I've been able to present two workshops live in person. It's been so much fun. Um, one was like a month ago in North Carolina, and then this last weekend I shared in Chicago with the Greater Chicago Wharf Chapter, and it was so much fun. It was so great to see people again um, and make music together. Um, everybody at the workshop um, in this last workshop um, we were all spaced out and we all had masks on and it was, uh, but it was still so much fun. And so I hope you'll come out and join us for a workshop in the future. Um, in the next couple of weeks, I'm doing a few more this weekend. I'm with the St. Louis Orf chapter in Ellisville, Missouri. Um, so you can, uh, join us for a, a workshop nine to one, I believe. Um, and then the following week on October 2nd, I'll be with the Milwaukee Orf chapter, the Greater Milwaukee Orf Dimensions, and that is um, in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. I'm getting more confident saying that every time I say it. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. If it's not how you say it, please let me know. Um, but that's Milwaukee Orf. That's in two weeks on October 2nd. And then in three weeks on October 9th, um, I'm sharing with um, a chapter from my home city, the Heart of America Orf chapter. Um, and that's going to be um, right here in Kansas City. Actually, I say that, but it's <laughs> south of the city, a little bit in Belton, Missouri. Um, but Heart of America is sort of like the Kansas City chapter. And so if you're around, um, I would love for you to come and join us and um, have fun together. It is so much fun. So I hope I can see you at a workshop coming up. If not, you know, I hope I'll see you again online at these Musical Monday videos or some other time. Um, okay, so... That's all the like housekeeping stuff. Let me tell you, earlier on in the year, I told you, I was like, I'm going to try this. I'm going to give you an update. Um, so one of the things I talked about um, in the last couple weeks on Instagram and my Facebook page is my water shoes. So I wanted, um, I wanted some shoes to like move around my classroom in because like I can wear like dress shoes. I can wear, um, I, I really, honestly don't think my principal would wear, care if I wear like tennis shoes or whatever, but um, I was wearing dress shoes. I was wearing sort of like, I don't know, they were comfortable and they looked fine. Um, but I felt like I, they, the soles were sort of thick and I didn't want to, like I wasn't moving around as much. I wasn't sitting down as much as I used to. Um, and maybe that's just because I'm getting older, but <laughs> I like wanted some inspiration. Um, and so I like started looking at ballet shoes and dance shoes and movement shoes. What do people wear when they do yoga? Um, to like try and figure out something that I could wear that I'd be comfortable in, but then I would be more comfortable moving in. Um, and I found some water shoes. They're like for when you go to the lake um, and, or to the beach or whatever, um, and you want something. Um, and these are so ridiculously comfortable. Um, I do have one battle scar from um, a kid who was like a little bit, I don't know if you can see, like barely, a little bit... Um, Lucy goosey with his dry erase marker. <laughs> he got my foot. Anyway, they're super comfortable. I'm pretty sure I can just throw them in the wash, but they were like $12. 
Um, totally worth it. I feel like I'm moving more. Um, I feel good about wearing them. Um, I just ordered another pair and a, a slightly different brand, so I will let you know if it feels worse or better. I don't know. Um, but if you want to know the exact ones I got, you can get the exact ones I got. Um, they're unisex. They're, you know, whatever. They come in a ton of colors. I just got, like, the boring gray so that they would, like, go with any outfit I wore. Um, but there's also, like, Ones that look like there's like an octopus tentacles on it or like waves or a rainbow or glitter. Or like there's all sorts of, all sorts of, and then just random colors. So anyway, but they are super comfortable and I feel like I'm just wearing like pajamas every day and love them. And also I'm moving around more. So when, um, okay. The other thing I wanted to share about was on Instagram and Facebook, I guess I talked about, um, my ukulele capo and, um, of course I've, misplaced it i'll find it um so my where, where did i put it there it is so my ukulele capo um i have a couple capos um and a capo if you're not familiar so like if i'm playing a song right so like just a basic chord progression if i put a capo on it and this is my capo that looks like a shark <laughs> how cute is that oh my gosh so if i put a capo on it and i put it in this first fret it moves basically everything up a half step. So if I play the exact same chord, it sounds a half step higher. I can move it up again. So I'm just playing this. In my head, I'm playing C, F, and G, but it's coming out as D, G, and A. It's magic, right? It's 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 nice because. Playing C, F, and G, that chord progression on the ukulele is very simple. Playing D, G, and A is not as simple. So when you have a song that like is more singable in a range like D or E flat or E, but you want to play ukulele and not like kill yourself trying to play these ridiculously hard chords, um, <laughs> you can put a capo on. So, but I have this this one that I've loved for years. Um, it is solid metal. It is shaped like a shark. It is hilarious and cute because it looks like the shark is biting the the neck of the ukulele. So I love that. But it is very heavy. <laughs> it has some pointy parts to it. And so anyway, I got this ukulele capo. Um, it's the R Rom brand. I don't know. Um, I, I can put a link to it if you're interested. Um, but it's super duper small. I thought like, why would I get a ukulele capo if I can just get a guitar capo? Because it'll be a little bit big, but like whatever. Well, here's the reason, because it's so super light, it doesn't stick up in weird places and it makes it like. So when I have this, the shark capo and it's like much heavier, if I can feel it. And with this, I can barely feel it. It's not in my way. With the shark capo, it's like I couldn't bend my hands quite as easily because like the nose of the shark came out too far and one of his fins came out. And this really is built for a guitar. It's not built for a ukulele. So I got the ukulele capo. I shared about it on Instagram the other day, but I wanted to just show it off here. I can put this on the links page. I don't think that I did. It's on my, um, my Amazon page. I do have um, a page with like a ton of ukulele resources. There's like... Um, you, you could try there's uh oh my gosh there's some super great tuners there's a tuner there's a pokemon themed tuner in case you're really into that um anyway so i this is on that page if you want it but i can send you a link if you want but it's uh, like so worth it because like i said like playing d or e flat or whatever is not fun to play if you go too far up it's sort of it's um it's like it's harder to play because you're moving your hand further and further but um it's totally doable totally worth it love my ukulele capo okay just thought that's just an update because i shared about it on um instagram the other day and i wanted to like come back and be like no but for real here's why it's worthwhile here's why you should get one if you want if you want you, you can teach yourself to play the super hard chords i support that okay cool so Today, I'm gonna to try and share as much as I can from my kindergarten, first, and second grade lessons. In the last, like, this is week five of Musical Mondays this year, I've been trying to share, like, all my K through five lessons, and if I can get to that, great. But I wanted to share more in depth K through two today because I wanted to talk about um, some of the tech integrations, um, some of the weird special circumstances that are happening to me this week, um, and talk about how I'm adapting to that so that you can see, like, maybe if you wanna do something similar yourself, what you might do. Um, so what I'll say is that um, we have 
the, the thing that's like affecting all my lessons this week is that we have an assembly on Wednesday, this Wednesday, um, and it's to honor and remember 9-11. Um, it, we, we didn't do it earlier because um, we have like a built-in assembly time. We have like a half day PD day on Wednesday with like a built-in assembly. So they were like, instead of taking time away from other content on other days, we would wait until the built-in day to do this assembly. That's why it's a little bit late after 9-11. But um, we're doing it here. And so it's like it, the students are going to talk about 9-11. They're going to talk about um, their... Uh, some of the st like fallout from that and and the how it affected our lives and how it affected things um, post 9-11 how everything changed there are going to be videos of teachers who are like here's where I was on that day like telling stories um, and one of the things they asked is they were like can we sing a patriotic song and they suggested God Bless America and I was like okay we could do that um but I don't know that I have ever actually taught God Bless America ever. Like, it's just, like, when I'm, like, patriotic songs, that's not the one that I'm, like, you know what I really want to teach. You know, so I don't know. And it just, it, um, it's a, I mean, most patriotic songs, because they're sort of related to hymns and whatever, do mention God. But I was, like, this one is really puts it out there. So I, I just wasn't as comfortable with that. And, and also, like, my fourth graders are currently learning um, patriotic music to do for a Veterans Day program, but I was not planning on doing God Bless America. So I was like, okay, two birds. Can I do America the Beautiful instead? Because we were going to do that on the Veterans Day program. So I was going to already be teaching it to at least one grade, right? And then I was like, that's also one that like they might need to know. Because I'm thinking back to like high school or college, like choir auditions and thinking like this is one of the songs that i had to sing as like an audition piece and that, that people are like oh everyone knows that well no maybe maybe they don't so this is um america the beautiful is what i was like can we do this one instead and the organizers were like sure <laughs> we don't we just thought america or god bless america would be like easy and i was like actually i think america beautiful would be easier whatever um so uh i that meant that like in a, they were like well it's in a week <laughs> it's like oh so that meant like i had to basically in all my k-5 lessons introduce and teach america the beautiful so that when we sing it at the assembly that they're not all just like sitting there you know like <laughs> chewing on their fingernails like we don't know this song um so oh it, in my head i was like three four five easy but k through two how do i teach this to them so i wanted to show you just how i'm doing it with all my grades and sort of how I'm adapting it okay so you're gonna see that in the lessons but I want to start with um, the way I'm doing it for grades three four and five because I'm focusing on k1 so I'm just gonna show you the three four and five and get that sort of out of the way so I made this um, I made this resource several years ago I, I have a lot of these resources called like um, favorite folk songs and there are like over a hundred of folk songs that are like just folk songs and what do I have in that oh, here I'll show you um, let me turn around uh, my Instagram camera. Let me show y'all. Um, I'm just gonna move y'all over. Ooh, sorry, almost dropped everyone. Sorry about that. Okay, so here's America the Beautiful. Okay, hopefully you can see that, all right? All right, and then let me switch y'all over um, Facebook. And if you lose sound, would you please like shout at me in the comments so that I know? Because otherwise, I'm I'm afraid I won't know. Okay. So this is like um, the set that I made, and this is from years ago. So here's like everything is included. This is what, I, and I, I did this for folk songs. I've done this for um, carols. I've done this for all sorts of stuff. I have a whole pack of patriotic ones, but this is what's like included in like every set. So there's like the, the title slides, America the Beautiful, our favorite patriotic song, um, in a couple different ways. Uh, learn more about our favorite patriotic in my head when I made these when I first started making these I was like I'm gonna print these out and use this as a bulletin board kit in a couple years when I'm like um, you know or, or I'm gonna use these as a bulletin board kit so like anytime I teach um, this song I can have this bulletin board material well now I was like now I'm like I'm also gonna use it as I'm teaching so these are all things that like I would probably print out like the grade level I might print out um, and then like, you know, where the song is from, there's a slide about what is a patriotic song. Um, there's a slide that's like, uh, you know, history about the song. 
Um, and then vocabulary words. If I want to go more into the history, I can. This is stuff that I would probably print out. I probably wouldn't go through all of this with students. But like the history of the song, Catherine Lee Bates, like why did she come up with the song? What inspired her? Um, you know, going to Pikes Peak, blah, blah, blah. Okay, interesting, but I probably wouldn't teach that to students, but I could put it in the hallway. Um, history of the song, it was almost the national anthem. It was considered... Um, and then I go into vocabulary, talking about like some of the vocabulary, why does it sound the way it is? And then for each of the basically lines of the song, each of the phrases, there's like a picture that, that goes with it. Okay, so this is like all included. And then down here I have the notation, I have the, um, the lyrics written out, I have the original poem in there, lyrics, so you can see how it was adapted. There's a whole page with like links to media, so if you want to um, watch other people sing, sing it or do it, you can. Um, this is just like a slide that I thought I'd print out and put on a bulletin board that has like key vocabulary words. There's another uh, picture of Mount Rushmore. So just all stuff that like maybe I would use if I used it as a bulletin board. Well, as I'm, as I'm doing it with older grades, as I'm teaching it, this is what I would project. I would project this first part, America the Beautiful. We talk about where it's from. Um, I definitely go into the page on patriotic song and I say like, what is a patriotic song? Well, it's really a song that's like a, a national song. It belongs to one nation. And what does that mean? It means that like we would sing about the United States, but we wouldn't sing these songs about Italy because we're not from Italy. And we wouldn't sing the patriotic songs of Guatemala because we're not from Guatemala. But I bet in Italy, there's a song about Italy. And in, in, the, in Guatemala, there's a song about Guatemala. And in South Korea, there are songs about South Korea. Each country has their own national songs, and that's, that is one of the things that makes it patriotic. And then I say that patriotic songs talk, you know, they express national loyalty. What does that mean? And I say we do something every day at our school that shows national loyalty when we do the Pledge of Allegiance. And so, you know, we talk a little bit about that, and then we say specific details. That's important, too, because, you know, you wouldn't write a song that's like, my class is great, I really like my class, my class is the best, Okay, well, like, what class, at what school, in what grade? You know, like, you have to give details. My fourth grade class is the best fourth grade class. Where? At what school? In what, in what country? You know, like, uh, and then if you're like, uh, Mrs. Sudak's class is the best fourth grade class because we get snacks before everyone else. You know, like, that gives specific details, right? So those are the things that I talk about when I'm on this slide about what is a patriotic song. I'm trying to give kids, like, more tangible information about like how to, how to make this make sense to them. We talk a little bit about how old the song is. I say, you know, it was first published 111 years ago. Um, it's actually probably older than that, but that was the first time it was actually ever written down was in 1910. And then we talk about um, vocabulary. I say there are two people who are really important in making this song. Those people are Catherine Lee Bates, who wrote the, the words. We could call her a poet because originally the song wasn't a song. Originally it was poetry. And so really she was the poet. But anytime you take words and you put music with them or you, or you make a song out of it, um, we call those words lyrics. They're the lyrics to the song. So you could call her a poet or you could call her a lyricist. Either way is fine. But Catherine Lee Bates, she wrote the words. And then there's this person, Samuel A. Ward, and he wrote the music. So we call him the composer. He took her words and he added them. He added the music. So we call him a composer. Now, sometimes the composer is also the poet, sometimes, but not always. So in, in this song, it's a little different. And then this song is so special because a poet wrote the words. And so some of the words use poetic language. Like you could say, oh, the field of wheat, right? But you could also say um, the yellow field of wheat. Ooh, or if you wanted to be really, uh, you know, dramatic and poetic, you could say the golden field of wheat or, or even better, because another word that means like dark yellow is amber. So amber field of wheat. And, but it, let's get even more poetic because if you look at a field of wheat as the air blows over the field of wheat, it almost looks like waves. Like it's yellow, but if it were blue, it would look sort of like waves. And so, um, she said the amber waves of grain instead of saying the yellow field of wheat. Well, it's just a, a more poetic way to say it, right? And same with the mountains. Like you could say, like, um, you could say, oh, the big, exciting mountains. But you could also say the majestic mountains. Or you could say the mountain majesties. And then, you know, if you really wanted to say, you could say like the, mount, the mountain majesties at twilight, 
blue. Or, or you could say the, because when the sun hits them at nighttime, the, they sort of look purple, the purple mountain majesty. So like that's what she did. She decided to go and be more poetic with her words because well, she was a poet. And so like these are the conversations I'm having with kids. And then I go through line by line and I talk about, I show where each of these things are. I say this is a range in the Rocky Mountains. Um, I say the amber waves of grain. This was taken near Dodge City, Kansas, which is in our state. So I make a point out of, of talking about that. Um, I mentioned Pike's Peak because this is one of the things that inspired Catherine Lee Bates to write her song. And so we talk about that and kids make a connection with that because some of them have been to or through or by or close to <laughs> Pike's Peak. Maybe they don't like, didn't actually go, but you know, um, they've been through or heard of it. And so kids like to make that connection. Um, we talk about... Um, what grows in our country and where things grow. And, and I explain a little bit about this being cranberry harvest and, and how that works. This is really cool for us specifically right now because you know we're, this, we're preparing this for a concert or for a program about 9-11. And so to show the New York City skyline, um, some kids are like, yeah, and that one tower is where the Twin Towers were. And I was like, right, because you, like, you knew that. <laughs> like, you knew that from a lesson you, you learned from your teacher but some of us know, you know, like we know that because we've seen the skyline another way or whatever. So it's, it, that's another interesting one to have. Um, whenever I talk about brotherhood, I say like, you know, brotherhood is um, when you maybe aren't actually related to somebody else, but you treat them as if they're family. Like that's brotherhood. And, um, you know, so, so these kids are sort of showing brotherhood because they're like, you know, they're showing... Um, they're showing each other love and caring. And then we talk about from sea to shining sea because our country is so big. There's an ocean on both sides. There's on one side the Atlantic and the other side the Pacific. And so to say like from sea to shining sea is like saying like from A to Z like and everything in between. It's like saying everything um, in the country. And then I show them this. I say, you know, you could learn it, the music this way where you have like the, the music notes on top and the lyrics right below. That's one way to learn the song. Or you could learn where you have just the words, uh, and like this is like all the words in the song separated out by their verses. Or you could do, and then I pull up a slide with just um, like verse one, the first four lines, and then the first chorus. And then um, what we're singing for the concert is um, verses one and verses four. So beautiful for spacious skies and then beautiful for Patriot dream. Those are the two that we're doing for this, um, assembly. So I basically broke it out into four slides where it's like the first half of verse one, the second half of verse one, and the first half of verse four and the second half of verse four. And then that's how we learn it with my third, fourth, and fifth grade. And I'll show you in a second how I do it with kinder first and second, because it is different because that presentation would like that presentational style would work for grades three, four, and five, but I don't know that it would work so well with K one and two. So I want to share in just a second about how I do that as I go through those lessons. Okay. I have like 10 minutes to talk about each lesson, which is not of time, but it's fine. Okay. So my kindergarten lessons for this week, um, when they come in, we do come and make a circle, 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 come and make a circle all around, which I have sung like every week on <laughs> this video. So if you, you want to hear the whole thing, um, it is in previous weeks. And also I'm pretty sure I, if you send me a message, I can send you the sheet music if you want. It's just button you may, you must wander with like come and make a circle lyrics. Um, and then kinder we do, let everyone clap hands like me. Let everyone clap hands like me. Come on and join into the game. You'll find that it's always the same. And I basically when I introduce that, I say, I have a new song I'm so excited to share. And it goes like this and I sing through just one time and kids start clapping already immediately, but they just like clap like crazy. I was like, oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. The song tells you exactly when and how to clap. So listen really carefully and see if you can figure out how many times you clap. Let everyone clap hands like me. Let everyone clap. And by th at that point, they're like, two, because there's always, again, kindergarten, right? They're going to shout it out. They don't know. It's week five. They're, they're still like figuring out when to talk and when to talk. So um, when let everyone clap hands like me. I go through and I try and get them to identify like when to clap and how many times to clap and we figure out it's two claps at the end of the first phrase, the second phrase, and the last phrase. I don't say those words, but like I just say like, let everyone clap hands like me, one, two. And we figure out where they go 
And then uh, once I feel like they've got it, I say, okay, you do the clapping. I'm gonna do the singing. Let everyone clap hands like me. Let everyone clap hands like me. Come on and join into the game. You'll find that it's always the same. Good, okay, now let's, I'm gonna change something and see if you can make the changes too. Let everyone pat knees like me. Bum, bum. Let everyone pat knees like me. Bum, bum. And I just do it and they automatically make the shift. And afterwards they say, what did we change? I'm like we, we're patting instead of clapping. You're right, and how many pats do you get to do? And they're like, two! Because we're like, try, I'm trying to get them to process like, it's always the same. Those are the words of the song say. And so you're always going to do two. Okay. And then we go through like three or four other examples. We like tap the ground because if we're sitting down crisscross or maybe we, if we want to stand up, we could do stomp, stomp or we could do uh, jump, jump, whatever you want. And I just sub out words and sub out lyrics. And by the end, hopefully they're singing and doing um, all the actions too. And then it's time to teach them um, America the Beautiful because like I want them to learn it in this lesson and hear it one more time before the assembly, before they like might be asked to sing it. And this is where things get a little dicey because I'm always, I'm like so stressed, like they're not, they don't, they won't care. It's like too much content. So what I decided to do was to share a book about America the Beautiful. There are a couple cool books um, and I'm gonna show you in a, in a second how exactly I share that. But the one that I use for my younger grades is this one, America the Beautiful. It's a scholastic book. There is no author because it is just the original lyrics and pictures. That's all it is. You probably already have it at your school or maybe in your classroom, I don't know, but maybe your library, but you can get it, it's real cheap. I put a link to it on the links page if you want. Um, I'm gonna show this off in a second. This is actually in my sub tub for other reasons, but it's a, it's a good book. Then there's this book called America the Beautiful, Together We Stand. This is my preferred um, America the Beautiful lesson book, but for reasons I'll explain in a second, I like the other one better for right now. But this is a cool book. Um, and I like it because on every page that's like they asked like a different artist to do a rendition and so it has the words here on the side there's a quote by a president um, I think it's a president on every page this one's Jimmy Carter and then Thomas Jefferson and, and then Abraham Lincoln Barack Obama, JFK, FDR. So like each page is different. And then, but like each page, the art is different, which is really cool too. So it's something different on every page, um, but it goes with the lyrics. Um, and then the quote matches sort of the picture and, and stuff too. Uh, but every page is just a little bit of a different view into what America is, who we are. This is cool for older grades. I don't think it's as good for younger grades. And since I'm doing this for younger grades right now, I opted to go with the like simple picture version. But America the Beautiful Together We Stand is great. You can, I don't think you can find it by author because again, it all it is is the original lyrics, quotes by presidents, and um, the pictures by different artists. So I don't think that it actually goes, like I don't think it actually has an author name it goes under Catherine Lee Bates. Like that's that's what the author is listed as. But we know she did not, she was not the person who pulled together all the content for this book since she's been dead for a long time. Anyway, so uh, you could, I, I have links to this on Link's page, but you could also just search America the Beautiful Together We Stand and it'll pop up, I'm sure. I got it used at um, a used bookstore for $3.99. Yay, don't buy things at full price if you don't want to. Um, Okay, so I wanna show you, so what I do, because this book is small, and my kids, I want them to see it, um, I use sort of a modified version of a document camera. Um, I, I do actually have a document camera at school, but it is old, and the, the resolution is not good. And so I do either one of two things. Um, I either use my phone, and I mirror that, because I have an Apple TV in my room, and I can basically, take my phone and project that up on the projector through the Apple TV. I either mirror my phone or I mirror my iPad. And I wanna show you what that looks like. Um, my phone, I have this handy dandy little thing that is made for like, it's honestly made for like food bloggers, like people who um, show you like the, the view down of like in the mixing bowl and whatever. Like it's made for people who like, um, do live videos of that or, or in-depth videos of that, right? So but what it does is it clamps onto your desk um, and then um, it has this swing arm 
and I did not tighten this part down. Whoops. Good that my phone wasn't in there. Um, tighten this down. It's got this swing arm so it attaches to your desk and then um, it moves up or down and your phone is here in this clamped portion on the end. And so then your phone can go up or down however you want um, so it can project or it can take a view down on your book. This is really cool and helpful if you're doing this with your phone. It is, I, I used the crap out of this um, on, when I was doing um, do, like at home lessons, COVID lessons, whatever, because it le meant that I could use my phone. It's great for recording if you're reading a book. Um, it, it was super, super nice, but it, it makes my phone basically a live document camera. Or you can use an iPad holder and there are things like that uh, the swing arm version, but iPad, but I'm just afraid my iPad's going to be too heavy and it's going to just drop onto everything. So instead I have just this stand. Um, it's on a little tripod. Um, and I take my iPad, I put the book itself on my desk, which you're going to see in just a second. Um, I put the book on my desk and then I project down. So like, let's say here I am in my kindergarten class, right? Um, and I think this is gonna work with technology. Who knows, let's find out. Okay, so I take my iPad and I put it here. And um, let me see if I can change. Again, Facebook, if I lose sound, please let me know and I will try and fix it. <laughs> but um, I take my iPad and Instagram, you're gonna sorta see a version of this. So I take my iPad um, and I basically just turn it on and I open up the camera. Sorry, Instagram, we got a great view of the ceiling in my room. Woo, okay. Yeah, you're gonna see this just fine. So yeah, so I just, ooh, move this over. Sorry, you're gonna get a great view of my, my socks. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so I basically do exactly this where I just zoom in on the picture or I zoom in on um, the book. I show it off, um, oh gosh, this is, I'm having to, <laughs> try and coordinate this, sorry. Um, so I zoom in, I just show kids the book and then we go through. Um, and with my kinder in first and second, the lesson is very similar. I just read the words, oh beautiful, for spacious skies. Spacious means wide open and big and you can just see lots and lots on the horizon. For amber waves of grain. And I might hold up the book to the camera so the kids can see a little bit better, get a little bit better of a zoomed in view. And I say like, you know, when we talk about amber waves of grain and I explain what amber is, the color, and we talk about grain and what grain makes. And we talk about why, you know, it starts out green when it's ready to be harvested, it turns yellow. And this is the thing it harvested, a combine. You know, we talk about that as we go through. And then I talk about the mountains again, what the sun, I, you know, it looks to me like it's blue and white and gray, but really it's at, at nighttime when the sun is setting, it sort of makes sort of a purple color. Okay. Oh, and then this is a fun page because we talk about how in our country, you know, some countries it's more like desert or more, uh, it's too cold to grow things. But in our country, there are lots of different regions and so you can grow all sorts of different stuff. What is it growing here? You know, we talk about the different things you can find apples, the trees, kids love the peppers, they think that's really fun, um, and lettuce. So we go through basically page by page. This page I talk about, oh, these are all symbols and places in the United States. And I'm getting better about saying United States and not America, even though like I grew up and was ingrained in me to just say America, but like America could be North America, South America, Central America, anywhere America. So um, I've been getting better about saying United States of America or United States. Um, just the more that I can. We, uh, yeah, God shed his grace on these, a pretty sunset. And then there's the Statue of Liberty and someone holding a flag. We, I sort of talk through each one. I talk again about brotherhood. If you can see the, the iPad feed, you can see that it's like trying to find faces, right? Because it's, it's my iPad. It's like it's trying to take a picture for me, uh, but that's fine. The kids don't care. But um, it's again, this is like my hack to be able to use this as a document camera. And then from sea to shining sea, we talk again about uh, East Coast, West Coast, and then, oh my goodness, and then there's an eagle. Oh, and an eagle is like a symbol of the United States. How cool. Oh, you know what? I have a friend, an eagle friend who I think can come talk to us. And then that's when I transition away from this book, from like document camera, back to my classroom, to doing my own things. Let me see if I can switch back. So I set my doc, Ugh. so you get a really great view of my inner works in my office. 
Um, so I, I set my iPad down, I move that out of the way, and then um, I pull out my Eagle Puppet, who I have never found a use for after years and years of doing this. Um, and I had him for a long time. Anyway, so I finally had a use for him because I'm trying to like explain Patriot songs to kindergartners. So um, my friend Alexander, because, okay, again, I, I, I have a lot of puppets and I am not, like, I, I know there are a lot of y'all out there who are like, I'm going to name my puppet Allegro. And then this other one, his name is Contus. And then this one, their name is very, very clever puppet names. And I don't have those because I will not remember them. So <laughs> my, my bear's name is Grizzly. And my, pup, my, my rabbit's name is Peter, Peter the rabbit. And my owl's name is Snowy. Like I don't have interesting names because I'll never remember them. So I was like, an eagle like sam the eagle from the muppets with that no i can't i'm not gonna remember that oh what do we do the only thing i can think of is like an eagle like patriotic and it made me think of hamilton so i'm calling him alexander for alexander hamilton anyway so <laughs> the eagle flies over and he goes hello oh that's not even the voice i use for him anyway i'm just too flustered to think about how i can't remember puppet names anyway so i say oh hello alexander how are you today oh i'm very good very good um and you're here to tell us about eagles yes i'm here to tell you all about eagles first of all let me tell you there are different kinds of eagle there's a golden eagle there's a fishing eagle there's an eagle owl and then of course there's me the bald eagle but you should know I'm not actually bald because actually I have black and brown feathers, but like uh, my tail feathers and my head feathers are white, but I'm not actually bald. Just please know that I'm not actually bald. Okay, that's good to know. But you're actually not here to tell us about eagles. You're here to tell us about that song, remember? America the Beautiful. Oh, oh yes, 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 yes. So anyway, uh, but before we do that, um, s Symbols of America. Yes, Symbols of America, because this song talks about lots of things in America and Symbols of America. and. Um, so, like, what's a great symbol of the United States of America? An eagle! A bald eagle! Yes, that's a great symbol. What else? What else? Um, red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue. Yes, that's a great symbol for the United States of America. What's another one? Another one? Um, did I say eagles? Yes, you said eagles. That's a great one. Great one. What else? What else, though? Um, uh, the flag. The United States flag is a great symbol of the United States. That's wonderful. What else? What else? Um, did I say eagles? You did say eagles. That's a, a great one. Um, what else, though? Because I know you know lots of them, right? Mm, the um, uh, st Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty. Wonderful. That's great. What else can you think of? Did I say eagles? You did say eagles. You did say that. Anything else you can think of? Mm, I'm running out of ideas. And for like second grade, I'll say like, can anyone else think of? But for kinder or first, I just I say like, well, I'm like Mount Rushmore. You know, like I have him say like one more, and then I'm say, okay, great. Well, you know, good job remembering some symbols in the United States. How about you teach us that song? Oh yes, wonderful. I'd love to sing the song for you. It goes like this. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, that's where the eagles fly. The eagles fly high in the sky. The sky is full of eagles and eagles here and eagles there. There are eagles everywhere. The eagles fly high in the sky. The United States is known for eagles. Okay, I'm um, Alexander. Thank you so much for that lovely song. I don't think those are actually the words. Oh, yes, no, those are the words. It's all about eagles. Which is all I mentioned the eagles. Okay, uh, Alex, I'm just going to put you back up on your perch. Let's take you on over to your perch. And um, my perch, by the way, um, if I can find it. 
Uh, you know those old CD like spools, like the CD inserts? Well, they take all the CDs off because Hoover and CDs anymore. And um, and then the puppets sit on them. It gives them just a little bit of a flared, like a like a base so that they don't fall over. So if you have something like an eagle or something else that like won't sit like on a cabinet or a shelf like you want them to, this is sort of a nice thing to have. Anyway, so he goes over and sits there and I go, kindergarten, I am so sorry. Those are not, I, those are not the words for the song. Because remember I looked in the book and I showed you the book and that had the real words. So. I'm so sorry. And so then I go back to the PowerPoint and I pull out literally everything else. <laughs> All I show um, is um, on the PowerPoint, I show the main page, which is the one that says like, America the Beautiful. And then as I'm singing the actual words, I go through and I click through the slides and show them pictures of the actual words. Why do the silly version with the eagle first? Well, my reasoning is I want them to hear the tune as many times as they can. And I don't think that singing this exact same song multiple times, because it's like slow, it's early in the year, I, they're gonna lose interest. And so I was like, I'll do a silly version where they can be like, ha ha, silly, it's fun. And then they'll already know the tune a little bit. And then I'll sing it a couple times. I'll sing the original verse, or sorry, verse one, I'll sing maybe ver that the Patriots Dream verse, just to give them the exposure to that. But the reason I did it silly to start was like to get it in their heads. And then to say like, oh, that's not right. Cause, because kids also will latch on to um, someone made a mistake and I want to hear the other version and they like to compare and contrast. So this is just another way to do that in sort of a funny sort of a way. So we do um, America the Beautiful um, and then uh, if we have any more time in the lesson, which usually we have a little bit of time, we pull out one of Kinder's favorite things, um, which is the lightning ball. And this is, um, I don't know if you can see very well, but um, this is one of those like electrical whatever um, and you know you touch it or whatever and it it moves your hand I say the lightning ball is very smart it can follow my hand it knows exactly where my hand is right but when I turn on its ears it will only do the lights when it hears me talking so it can hear my speaking voice it can hear my singing voice it can hear my shouting voice And so it's just really fun to get to talk to the lightning ball and then, you know, I turn its ears off or whatever. But they, that, this is like one of their favorite lessons of all time is to get to um, see the lightning ball, talk about whisper voice. They think it's so hilarious. That's like, I, I gave you a lot of that first time lesson through and I wanted to compare and contrast the, the three through five version of America with the K through two version of America. The K through two version has the eagle, um, was a little silly um, and is, just a, a fun way to sort of bring it in and, and pull it through. And also like we can talk about symbols of the United States. We can talk about, um, you know, different things, but it's just another way to sort of hook them and hopefully bring them in. Do I expect kindergarten and first grade to actually sing with us this week at the assembly? Probably not because their language skills aren't there. Their reading skills aren't there. There's no way they're going to, unless I like drilled it, drilled it, drilled it, drilled it and ruined their kindergarten like music lesson, they're not going to know it. Like me singing it two or three times with them, they're not going to know. They might, they might be like, oh, I recognize that, but they probably won't sing. And honestly, that's okay. But my two through fifth, hopefully they'll be good enough that they'll be able to like sing along, read the words if they want to. So second lesson of kindergarten, we do come and make a circle. We do let everyone clap hands like me. Again, only a more advanced version of that. So instead of clapping or patting or stomping, we might jump or we might... Um, you know, find something else you can do two times. We might twist, we might um, go high low, we might do whatever so that it's, um, it's something different than let everyone clap hands like me. Maybe it's let everyone spin around like me, spin, spin, you know, like they get to do whatever we want. Snowy comes out one more time. Ooh, snowy. And by the way, I, I am much better at the owl puppet than I am at the eagle puppet. Yeah, because um, I've gotten just much better with Snowy. Woo hoo hoo, yes, much better. Anyway, um, also inside the owl, the owl has a couple fun little tricks to it. Um, if you like want some puppet fun. Um, so the, the there is a Velcro that Velcros her, her arms together so that you don't have to like hold them together like I had to do for Alexander. Um, inside of Snowy, there's a joystick 
that, that will move her head either way. And I've gotten really good at it where I can have her sort of like look up and look down and do different things. And she can react a little bit. Ooh, ooh, yes I can. And I have a very, very realistic snowy owl voice. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Very good, Mr. Rao. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you think that it's a very good and realistic rendition. Anyway, um, but so, so it's nice to have um, Snowy um, do her thing with the kindergartners. They love her, most of them. And so we reprised something we did with Snowy a couple weeks ago, which is the song where she goes, who are you? And then you, the kids get a respond back. And as just as a quick reminder, Snowy's like, okay, okay, just in case you forget, Mr. Rao and I will do it together. Ready, Mr. Rao? Yeah, here we go. Who are you? Mr. Rao. No, no, Mr. Rao. That was your speaking voice. We, is your speaking, we wanted your singing voice. Could you try it again? Who are you? Mr. Rao. No, Mr. Rao, that was your whisper voice. That was your whisper. Do you, do you know that? You know that, right? Do you? You all know that. That was his whisper voice. Okay. Use your singing voice. Okay. Who are you? Mr. Rao! No! 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 That was your shouting! Mr. Rao! He's doing this on purpose. I'm pretty sure he's doing this on purpose just to be silly, Mr. Rao. Mm. Try again. Who are you? Mr. Rao. High five. Yeah, and if you do it, if you do it, then I'll sing your name back to you. So if you're like, Mr. Rao, then I'll go, Mr. Rao. Or if you're like, Gabby, I'll go, Gabby. And I sing it back, and then I give you a high five. Or I might give you a fist bump. Or I might give you a head, um, uh, a head, uh, what do they call it? Um, a uh, head bump? Head bump. No, something else. Like that. A head bump. Yeah, that's what we do. Anyway, so. Yeah, we'll do that. But but if you sing back, that's what I'll do. Okay, so so Snowy goes around. We did that a couple weeks ago. They have so much fun with her, um, and each kid gets to sing their name to her. And again, for some reason with puppets, some kids won't sing to me, but they will sing to Snowy. It's the magic of puppets. What's really funny is like, guess what, kid? Snowy is me. So I feel like I'm not going to sing for Mr. Rao. Surprise, you just did. But um, no, I, I think puppets are fun like that because for some reason, kids, some kids will just sing for Snowy, not for me. Anyway, and then with the rest of our time for kindergarten, we'll do Where is Thumpkin. It's another one that we're reprising, but like it gives us a chance to like retry, redo. The more, I feel like the more I'm singing in these, especially early on in kinder, the better it is for them later on um, because I want them to just get comfortable with that, singing by themselves, singing with others, and doing these silly, simple little finger plays or finger songs is, or, or, or quick echo songs is really easy for them to handle. Second grade, or sorry, first grade, we come in, we do come and make a circle, 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 just like kindergarten. Um, and then we do, um, I, I, to say hello now, because like they're sort of more used to this, I'll do hello student name, and they'll say hello Mr. Rouse, so like hello Devin, Hello, Mr. Rao. Hello, Anissa. Hello, Mr. Rao. Hello, Jalen. Hello. You know, I'll do each kid. I'll go through it. We started it the last couple weeks just speaking it. Hello, Jason. Hello, Mr. Rao. Hello, Diana. Hello. But now we're singing it. So it's like the next step. And what I'm actually doing while they're singing is I'm standing at the piano, like playing a har like a, a sort of a harmonic thing underneath and then doing the interval back and forth. So they're hearing it. They're getting used to it. Um, they're sort of getting that response ready in their head to sort of just um, to keep it in their brain. Um, we do, instead of the regular old head and shoulders, and this is a time where I use a capo, um, we do the new version. I say, you know, I used to have this bus driver when I was your age, and her name was Anne, and Anne would always say, oh, hey, honey, how you doing? Hey, sweetie, how's it going? Hey, baby, did you, did you have a good weekend? And it's, she didn't actually think that we were actually honey. Like she knew we were kids and not like a food. And she didn't think we were actually babies. She knew we were kids. But she just like used those like silly nice names, like, you know, like sort of nickname, pet name sort of things. Um, because I, honestly, Anne was a little older and I think that she like forgot some of our names. Because there were a lot of us on the bus. So I think maybe she forgot. Okay, that's not actually true. My bus driver, Ann Slingsby, she knew all of us, and she would never forget. So whatever, but but I'm just modifying it to get ready for the song. So anyway, so then we sing, um, head and shoulders, baby, one, two, 
three, head and shoulders, baby, one, two, three, head and shoulders, head and shoulders, head and shoulders, baby, one, two, three, which is a great song, not so great in C major. So I just grab my capo, I put it up two frets, and for them to sing, and now it's in N, D, but I am playing C. Head and shoulders, baby, one, two, three, head and shoulders, baby, one, two, three, head and shoulders, head and shoulders, head and shoulders, baby, one, two, three. And then, you know, so we'll do it a couple times. They get the process. Um, I have them do for actions. Head and shoulders, baby, one, two, three, head and shoulders, baby, one, two, three. So it's like they, they did the actual head and shoulders weeks ago, so it's like the new version. So then we'll do head and shoulders. We'll do knees and toes, baby, one, two, three. We'll do, and I'll say, that's too easy. Let's do um, um, uh, arms and eyebrows. Let's try that. Arms and eyebrows, baby, one, two, three. Arms and eyebrows. Oh, that was too easy. Let's do um, back and uh, tummy. Back and tummy, baby, one, two, three. And we do several different versions. In the next lesson, I'm going to let kids decide. And Today I had one, the sweetest little girl, who was like, what would you like to do? And she was like, armpits and booty. I was like, what? <laughs> Why am I letting kids choose this? And I was like, great. <laughs> Good choice. Thank, thank God I am not being observed in this moment. Anyway, so um, I let kids uh, choose. And then we do uh, the Grizzly Bear song, which I'm pretty sure I talked about before, but if not... Um, I would go back and talk about it again. But um, uh, I talked about it, I know last year for sure, but it's the grizzly bear. Oh, grizzly bear was sleeping in a cave. Please be very quiet, very, very quiet. If you wake him, if you shake him, he'll get very mad. Right? And so then we, uh, we learn the song, we pull out Grizzly the Puppet, we play the game as much as we can. Sweet and simple done. The second lesson they come in, we do come make a circle. We do head and shoulders with kid variety, kid options of chin and elbows or whatever. You know, the kids get to choose um, as long as they choose two different um, body parts. And then we do a quick hello. And then the rest is sort of eaten up by the America the Beautiful lesson, which I have to get to because of our assembly this week. Second grade comes in. Um, they do the circle song, come make a circle, circle, circle. They do the, the hello, David, hello, Mr. Mo, hello, Donna, hello, you know, like we've always been doing. Um, we do the same song we've been doing the last couple of weeks, Dippy Doo, which is another um, sort of a welcome song. Good day, good day to you. Good day, oh, Dippy Doo. Good day, good day to you. Good day. Oh, dippy do, and at this point, I've sort of taught them to like wave across the circle, wave at somebody, say, you know, like smile and wave, and then we do dip, dip, dippy do, dippy do, oh, dippy do, dip, 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 dippy do, dippy do, oh, dippy do, and I know I talked about this on a previous week, so I'm not going to go into all of like how to start that lesson because it's like the third or fourth or fifth time we've done it in class. So this time, I say I'm going to make it harder. Instead of doing clap, pat, clap. Pat, this time do clap, tap the floor, clap, tap the floor. And they're sitting crisscross, they're like, whatever, that's easy. So we do, we do good day, good day to you. And then on the B section, we do clap, pat the floor, clap, pat the floor, dun, 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 you know. So it's just the next thing and say, oh, that's too easy. Do the same action, clap, pat the floor, but this time, stand up. So they stand up, they sing, good day, good day to you. And then when we get to the B section, they have to do clap, and then they have to really duck down and, and tap the floor because uh, they're in a standing position. I say, oh, still too easy. Let's do, uh, what are some two things we could do that are different? Oh, I know. Let's do front, back. So then they have to like jump. Dip, dip, dippy, dip, which is hilarious to see them do. Um, and then maybe we'll do one foot forward, one foot back, and then switch, and switch, switch, switch. Or maybe, you know, whatever. Um, high, low, different things to have the, the different um, dip, dip, dippy do on that part. And they love that. They think it's fun. The rest of the lesson goes into America the Beautiful. Again, it's because I talked about it before, I'm not going to go into all that. Um, I talked about that earlier in this video, so I won't go into all that right now. The second time they come into class, we do uh, the circle song, we do dippy do, we do the sung hello. 
And again, the dippy do is just, it's the same thing. It's just like with more kid actions or more extensions or let's make it harder. Or let's go a little faster or whatever to like up the ante to keep them interested, but like still similar content, just we're building on what we've done before. And then we do a song, um, which I love and have done for many years. Um, and it, I say, I have a new song. I want you to listen for details in this song. I'm going to sing it. And, and when I'm done, I'm going to ask you to tell me one thing you heard in the song. And the song was, Old King Glory on the mountain. The mountain was so high that it nearly touched the sky with a one, two, three, follow me. I let kids tell me as much as they can remember. Usually they can remember there's a king involved. There's a mountain. The mountain was really high. Great. Listen again, see if you can hear any other details. Old King Glory on the mountain. The mountain was so high that it nearly touched the sky. With a one, two, three, follow me. What'd you hear this time? And we, we basically at that point can say almost all the things. I may be singing it one more time. Say like, okay, you heard all that stuff. Now listen for it as I sing it this time. It's just like giving them something to listen for. It's like that guided listening for when you're actually like giving them the content so that they're focused listening. They're active listeners, not just like randomly, you know, playing with their shoelace or whatever. And then I say, you know what? King Glory is here right now. Do you want to, do you want to meet him? Great. He's me. It's me. I'm Because what? Look, I've got, see, because I even got a crown. See my crown? And I have a scepter. It's a, it's a base bar mallet. <laughs> it's a really old one. Anyway, oh my gosh, look, I'm, I'm King Glory. And they're like, no, you're not. I was like, oh, really? Then watch this. And I walk around the circle. Old King Glory on the mountain. The mountain was so high that it nearly touched the sky. And then with as much confidence as I muster, I can go with a one, two, three. And I tap one kid, two kids, three kids on the head. With a one, two, three, follow me. And without fail, every time I do this lesson, the three kids stand up and they, they get behind me. And I was like, if I weren't the king, could I get these peasants to follow me? No. And the kids are like, you're not a king, you're wearing a tambourine, but whatever. So like they'll go with, they'll go, go with me um, and it is hilarious every time. So then what do we do? We, we, I do it until all the kids are in a line except for one, and that becomes the new king glory or queen glory or whatever. And then, um, then we go, then that kid gets to lead. I stand back. I play ukulele. I gradually release it so like I'm not singing at all. I'm not giving directions. They're just doing it. And they, it's, why do I teach this song? A couple reasons. It's cumulative. So they, you know, we can talk later about how can you keep adding. Um, it's cumulative in action. Um, it uh, has one kid as a leader. Um, it has, they have to problem solve sometimes when they're like kids really far away and they have to tap people and like how do they do that? Um, and it gives independence for them, but also the vocal range is like a full octave, which is great, plus a low so relationship. So there are a lot of great musical elements to this. I actually was observed on this lesson today and I can't wait to talk about it because I'm a nerd with my principal. <laughs> um, but, but anyway, so we do Old King Glory if we have time. Um, I like to show them one more thing on my iPad, um, which is I can, with my iPad, um, I have this app called Sketches School, and I can draw uh, notes and rest. This is not my second grade lesson. This is something else. But, uh, okay. Um, I can, okay. <laughs> it's being silly. Um, I can draw, you know, like any sorts of, oh, okay, okay. Well, it doesn't like me. Anyway, I can draw any sort of thing on here. I could draw, um, at this point, we're doing like um, ta's and ta -dees. They're used to that. We might do ta -dees and rests. They're used to seeing stick notation. So I just draw it. And again, this projects up onto, um, onto the screen. It's really easy for kids to see that. So it just makes, it's just like, again, like drawing on the board or whatever, but then that means with it on my iPad, I can roam around the room. I can be anywhere I need to be and still have that projected up on the screen. And that's if we have time in the lesson. We don't always, but sometimes we do. And I'm like, great, rhythm review. Great, we have time to do that. Great, what are some words that would work for a ta? That, uh, you know, we've done walk, walk, running, walk. What, what else can we do? Peach, peach, pizza, peach. You know, what else can we do? You know, that's a fun thing to try out with kids too. 
Okay, I'm out of time, but I did get through my K through two lessons, and I showed you how I modified that America the Beautiful lesson for multiple grades, um, and so I'm glad I got a chance to show that, and I'm glad I got to show you sort of how I use my iPad as a document camera. Um, if you're listening to this on the podcast and you want to go back and see that, you can see this video archived on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, um, and if you actually got to see the video, great for you, so you can sort of see exactly how I do that. Um, I'm going to be back again next Monday. I hope you'll join me again for that. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the chat. Or um, if you have any, you know, you can email me. But also I hope I'll see so many of you this weekend at St. Louis Orf at our uh, workshop this weekend in Ellisville, Missouri. Or next weekend, um, October 2nd at the Milwaukee Orf chapter. Or in three weeks in Kansas City at the Heart of America Orf chapter. Um, and that is in Belton, Missouri. Send me a message if you have questions about any of those or you want to come join us and you don't know how. Um, have a great night, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'll see you next Monday. Bye, Facebook. It was great having you tonight.